We are uh, thankful for all of you being here. And uh, last week, we, we appreciate Brother Gary and Terry and Dennis taking care of service for us while we were gone. And I appreciate all of you uh, faithfully being here last week when we were out. And uh, I, uh, I, uh, what did she have about? I kind of, uh, I was going to be studying. Carly, I don't know if we could have any more songs. You ever, uh, you ever kind of come unprepared a little bit, maybe? Uh, my uh, scripture reading today, uh, Lord help me. First Chronicles chapter 6, and we'll just start at verse 1 this morning. Mr. Carter, can you read that? The sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The sons of Kohath were Amran, Ishar, Hebron, and Uzeel. Aaron, Moses, and Miriam were born in the family line of Amram. The sons of Aaron were Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithmar. Eleazar was the father of Phineas. Phineas was the father of Abishua. Abishua was the father of Bukha. Bukha was the father of Uzzah. Uzzah was oh, that's never going to work. <laughs> JC, where's JC? There's a bag in my office. I've got some books in it and Sunday school notes. Go grab it. Where are you? Grab it. Uh, I was going to study a little bit more, but that's not going to work. You ever had one of those days nothing works out for you? Are you hot? I'm sweating. Dennis, we turn on there. I don't know. It's just me. I'm sorry, I got my, yeah, I got my pajamas on still this morning. That's okay. It's going to be okay. But, uh, but we were going on vacation. We had a good time last week. The JC books, that's not books, I'll take it. It's, you got to be careful with this stuff, bud. I, uh, we were going on vacation. I, uh, well, this is what I did while I was gone, so I might as well show y'all what I did, okay? I mean, I don't know what else we're going to do, really, and y'all kids, y'all know what these are? Y'all know what these are? Flippers, right? Look here, guys. Look, look here. Look here. Come on, kids. Y'all come up here and sit down. Y'all, I'll show y'all, because y'all probably never seen some real flippers. I mean, these are the real deal right here. The real deal. I tell you what, it may be real simple today, but I tell you what, I'll show these kids some dive stuff. Look here. Y'all know what this is? Snorkel and mask. Y'all ever been, yep. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, y'all ever, y'all ever done any snorkeling? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of hard to talk with that in my mouth. Y'all ever done any of that? Any snorkeling? Yeah, was. Huh? You know what? You could get in some shallow water and you can, you can snorkel just a little bit, you can see the bottom. You can see rocks, you can see cans, aluminum cans, like people drop off when they're in the, at the lake. But you can't see very deep. You can only see a few feet. But here's what I was going to do. Let me show you right here. Ah, yeah. Y'all probably never seen one. Let me, let me show you. Oh. There you go, <laughs> Y'all see that? Y'all know what that is? What you do? No, it's not a backpack. This is you put a tank on the back. And I can breathe. That's my air. And then I have a, also have a secondary air, which is usually over here somewhere, but I think it's hanging there. Right here it is. See, I got two of them. If one of them goes out, I've got another one. And uh, 
Sometimes both of them goes out, and I, if both of them goes out, I've been with my wife before, and I yanked hers out of her mouth. And then you can breathe, because she had air. But uh, anyway, I, I've got, there's all kinds of stuff. I've got a, some gloves and some boots that I wear, some special boots. But anyway, let me get this off my head. But uh, you know what? There's a story in the Bible that talks about scuba diving. Y'all didn't know that, did you? Now, hang on. Y'all stay with me, all right? We're going we're gonna to see if we can uh, figure out. I think that's um, over in Luke. Matter of fact, it's Luke chapter 5, and we're going to start at verse 1, okay? We'll just start there until I find it. This morning I'm a little, little out there, all right? But it says, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret. I don't know how to say that big word. And saw two ships by the lake, by the fishermen, but, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. Okay, this is the deal. They were washing their nets. You know what they were doing? They had a big fishing net and they were cleaning it. You know why they were cleaning it? Because it had gotten dirty. Why would it get dirty? Go ahead. Well, no, not really because they caught fish, but because they were, they, were, they were up close to the bank. They were in the shallow. They were snorkeling. They were up right up next to the edge of the water. They were snorkeling, and they were too close. You know, that's where all the trash is. Did y'all know that? That is where all the trash is, is up close to the bank. It isn't ever out in the deep. So they were snorkeling, all right? That's the disciples there. Let's go down to verse 3. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from land. And he sat down and taught the people from the ship. So while he was out on the ship, Jesus got on the ship, he started teaching the people. But listen to verse 4. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drop. Is that right? Drop. Okay, got it right this time. All right. So what he did is he told them, he said, look, guys, if you want to catch fish, you got to get away from the shore where all the trash is. you got to get on your scuba stuff, and you got to go way out in the deep, and you got to drop your nets. Y'all, is that up on the screen? Whoop, whoop, you may be ahead of me. It says, verse 4 says to drop your nets. Y'all see that? N-E-T-S. That means many nets. That's what Jesus told them to do, drop their nets. All right, let's go on. Verse 5 says, And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night. We've been looking for fish all night long. And I've taken, taken nothing, nevertheless, at thy word. I will let down the net. That's not what God told him to do. One net. There he's going to let down one net, and God told him to let down his nets. But he's going to do it. Let's see what he happens. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were on the other ship, and they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. So he, you know what? If they would have used all the nets like they were supposed to, one thing that probably would have happened is they wouldn't have broke their net because they had had a lot of nets, wouldn't they? They had had a lot of fishing nets. They would have been out in the deep, and they would have caught all that fish. So you know the Bible does talk a little bit about snorkeling. But you know what? There's an Old Testament I like Old Testament Bible stories. But there's one Old Testament Bible story, and it talks about Israel building this big temple. And when he builds this big temple, they, uh, the, God told them that there was going to be one place in the temple that he would live, and it was called the Holy of Holies. Y'all know what the Holy of Holies? It's where the Ark of the Covenant was. So there was only one place in there that he was going to be. As a matter of fact, they would send a high priest in there once a year, only a high priest would go once a year into the, the Holy of Holies, and he would have to sacrifice or altar on the altar, sprinkle some blood on there. And if he wasn't where he needed to be, they would tie a rope before he would go in there, and they had bells on him. And those bells, if they hit, quit hearing them ring, they'd drag him out because the Lord had smitten him dead. It's not good, is it? It's not good at all. We don't, we don't want to ever be smitten dead, do we? We definitely don't want to. But Romans 3.23 says that we, 
For all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that's what I want today. I want eternal life for my soul. But you know what we do when we come to church? You know what we do? We think that church is a social gathering. You know what a social gathering is? We just come up here and say, Hey, how y'all doing? Shake my hand. Let's y'all shake my hand, all right? We treat this just like a social gathering. Good to see y'all this morning. How y'all doing? You know what? We dress up. We put on our suit, you know, and our tie. You know, that's how we treat church. We just come in here. Nothing to do. We just get ready. As a matter of fact, we may be getting ready. My wife sometimes does this. She may be getting ready at home, and she recognizes that her shirt doesn't match her jeans or her blue jean skirt or whatever she's got on. And you know what she does? She changes the shirt. You know what? That's because she wants to match. She wants her socks to match. You know that my tie's got to match my suit. Y'all, sometimes y'all do that. Y'all may not do that, but the girls are real bad about doing that. I'll go ahead and tell you. Jade's real bad. She's one of those girls that has to have everything matching. But here's the thing. You know what we uh, we know what we forget? We come in the church like it's a social gathering. We forget what? We forget that we're coming to church and we need to pray. See, we don't worry about the inside. We just worry about the outside. We worry about the physical appearance and we neglect the inside. But today, what I'm trying to tell you is that we don't need to snorkel around the edges of the bank. We need to go out to the deep. That's what the, he, Jesus told the disciples, isn't it? We need to get into His Word. We need to dig, dig deep into His Word. We need to dig deep into prayer. We need to dig deep into fasting. We don't need to be on the surface anymore. We don't need to hang out where all the trash is. You know what? We, you know what? We just come into church, though. We come into church. It's just snorkeling. If you just come to church, it's just snorkeling. You know what? If, my, if I hit my big toe, y'all ever hit your big toe? It hurts, doesn't it? And I say a prayer, Lord, help Ethan's big toe. And that's all I ever do? That's snorkeling. But what we've got to do is we've got to dive down to the deep. We've got to get all the way down to the deep. And we have got to touch God. We have got to touch it in His Word. We've got to research His Word and study it to separate and divide the Word of truth. That's what we're called to do. That's what we've got to do. 1 Corinthians, this is what Paul, he understood something about Christ. Y'all listen to what Paul says. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hid hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. You know what? God is big and He's full. And you know, He's really deep. And the only way I can understand Him is I've got to study. I've got to study His Word and I've got to pray. And I've got to understand the mystery that Paul's talking about there. I've got to understand the mystery of God. See, anybody, y'all know what? I could teach any of y'all kids. Y'all know what? All y'all kids can snorkel. Did y'all know that? We can put the snorkel on. You can snorkel? Yeah, well, I tell you, I can teach y'all kids. It doesn't take much to teach someone to snorkel. I can put this mask on and these fins on and I can teach you to snorkel. But you know, scuba diving, it's a little bit more serious. It takes more because you know what? If you don't do some things right, you can even die scuba diving. It's pretty serious. You've got to go through a class. You've got to take some tests. You've got to read some books. And you've got to do some different tasks. You've got to take this out of your mouth underwater. And you've got to change it with this one. Then you've got to pull Carla's out of her mouth and put it in your mouth if you run out of air. You've got to take care of yourself in the water. So it takes some training, some serious training to get down there. In other words, it takes some study. It takes some perseverance. And studying His Word and looking at His Word. Also, Paul said in Ephesians 3, 16 through 19, that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints that is breadth and length and depth and height. And to know the love of Christ which passeth, 
and knowledge that you might be fulfilled with all the fullness of God. The scripture is talking about us growing roots, growing deep, deep, deep into God's Word. I've got, a, I've got, my, met, I've got my notes all out of right here this morning. But I've got another scripture I want to read. The Spirit of the Lord, this is from Isaiah 6, verse 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Lord and King is on me. The Lord has anointed me to tell the good news to poor people. He has set me to comfort those whose hearts have been broken. He has set me to announce freedom for those who have been captured. He wants me to set prisoners free from the dark prison. He has set me to announce the year when we will set people free. He wants me to announce the day when he will pay his enemies back. Our God has sent me to comfort all those who are sad. He wants me to help those in Zion who are filled with sorrow. I will put beautiful crowns on their heads in place of ashes. Listen. I will anoint them with oil to give them gladness instead of sorrow. I will give them a spirit of praise in place of a spirit of sadness. They will be like oak trees that are strong and straight. The Lord himself will plant them in the land that I will show how glorious he is. He said he will set me a spirit of praise. You know what? When we get up in the morning, we decide what spirit we're going to wear for that day. We need to put on a spirit of praise instead of a spirit of worry or a spirit of sorrow. That's the spirit he wants to give us. That is the spirit he wants to have in our hearts that he longs to be with us. Y'all getting it? Y'all getting it? We come in here. This place is a spiritual hospital. This place is a hospital, a spiritual hospital. And we treat this place like a social gathering, a physical hospital. This is not a physical hospital. We worry about how we look out here and we forget about the inner man. We have got, when we dress, you ladies, you know it. You start getting ready. My wife leaves it to the last minute. When she has to get up and go to work, you know what she does? She lays there in bed. She knows exactly what time she's got to get up. She figures out what color clothes she's going to put on before she ever gets out of bed. But you know what? Before we ever get out of bed, we better figure out whose praise we're going to be singing today. We better put on that spirit of praise. We better not neglect this inner man because this inner man is what sets us apart. This inner man is what gives us the liberty and the freedom. We've got to work on this inner man. Go ahead and see. Be at the center of it all. Jesus at the center. 